Mrs. Blethyn would take her buddies up to Canada on the yacht. Her buddies were like Mrs. J. Tate Mason, whose husband was president of the American Medical Association. The big thing I remember about Mrs. Mason is that they all got stinking drunk at the Empress Hotel and came down on the float to get into the boat, the, the launch, the tender from the yacht. And uh, I was running the tender from the yacht, and she stepped into the tender, but I was still about 10 or 15 feet out. So I hauled her up with a boat hook. <laughs> The president of the wife, the wife of the president of the AMA, Baldwin, who was the English butler, used to give me a bad time. Man, I got some more or less. Talk about my stepmother. Here was a spit and polish guy, if ever there was one, and he just made life as miserable as he could. Until one day he dropped a solid silver tray overboard. And I dove down and got it. We got along after that. We would go to Vancouver. It was during Prohibition. We would buy stores in the store, and they would be brought aboard. And in the stores would be cases of whiskey and of all kinds. And the criminal would pay for them. And Baldwin would bring them over the border, and uh, then he'd sell them back to the criminal at bootleg prices. In the United States, so the, the colonel paid for him twice. The other thing the colonel did is he had new, new pair of garters every day. And Baldwin dressed him. Put on, they used a new deck of cards for every card game they played. The colonel paid me $50 a month with a $5 raise per month as long as I lasted. And that would just be in the summertime. This, you understand, is enough dough to put a guy in co through college. And at the end of the first summer, the colonel summoned me to the after deck. I remember he spread all over the settee there and says, By the hell, yes, sir. You got enough money to go to college this year? Yes, sir. If you run out, let me know. Yes, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so then, the next year, I wanted to be a sailor, which paid more, 75, with a five buck a month increase. And I had spent the winter as a night watchman on the yacht because it was it was tied up and canvassed over. And the captain didn't want to have to stay on it. And I did. I could walk to school. So I wanted to become a deckhand instead of a cabin boy. So we're going through the locks. And man, that's tricky. If you've ever taken a 96-foot boat through the locks and you know that if you scrape any varnish off, it's just like scraping off your boss's ass. And he's standing there watching me handle the stern line, which is the tough line to handle. And I got us through. And then another time, the captain <laughs> was headed full speed ahead for sure. And I leaped off, and I could tie a bowl in. I could tie a bowl in like a lightning. And got it around the, the uh, pier and kept the fucking boat from <laughs> hitting the shore. Whew. Then the colonel had to sell his yacht. He had paid $150,000 for it, and two years later he had to sell it for 7500 And I went to him for a re recommendation for another job, and the recommendation, I will never forget it, and you've heard it many times, but the recommendation said, to whom it may concern, what Bill Spidell says he can do, he can do. That got me a job on, a, a good paying job, I mean a job on a charter yacht in Alaska where I worked the next four years of my college because I worked, would work six months of the year and go to school six months. Uh, and I can tell you one thing, don't have a love affair if you have to be in Alaska six months at a time. <laughs>